I'm gonna go directly to the point with this shoe. This is the best trail shoe I've tried. And you can stop watching the video here. I would like you to stay because there's a lot to be said about this shoe. Let's have a look. Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex. In today's video, we have the review of this shoe, a fantastic trail shoe by Hoka. It's the Tecton X2, the replacement for the Tecton X that we reviewed last year on the channel. This shoe was sent to us by a running warehouse and you have a link to runningwarehouse.com in the description of this video. It doesn't cost you anything extra using this link, but it gives us a little kickback and it definitely helps us to grow the channel and keep on doing what we're doing here. So yeah, thanks for using the, the links if you're interested in this shoe or any, anything else. Let's look at the specs first. And this shoe comes at 284 grams in my size US 11 EU 45. It appears to be slightly heavier than the shoe um, I had last year. Keeping in mind that this is US 11 and I had a US 10 and a half last year for the uh, Tecton X. That's half a size of a difference. And that probably explains a bit of the weight discrepancy. However, this, even in the same size as last year, I believe would be heavier. Not a big deal. It's only a couple grams less than, you know, one tenth of an, of an ounce, I would say. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's how it is. Stack height, 32 millimeters in the heel, five millimeters drop for that 27 in the forefoot. I'm always a bit confused with Hoka because I believe they're not counting the insole or the outsole. I never know which of the two. I think it's the insole. The shoe is a bit higher than 32. It's probably like 36, 35, 36. And it feels like more than 32, definitely. So just keep that in mind. Don't be um, scared if 32 feels too low for you because this is definitely higher and it compares with shoes that have a higher stack height on the trails. $220, 210 euros, if I'm not mistaken. There's a small difference between US and Euro price. If the price is not right, let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to, to be corrected there. Let's look at the upper and we have that um, same or very similar material to the one that was on the Speedgoat 4 EVO. Speedgoat EVO was the name of that, of that shoe. It's a highly technical material, feeling super um, sturdy, not too rigid, but very sturdy, very durable, also very lightweight. The shoe feels lightweight and uh, the upper contributes to that. You have that feeling of being connected to the upper. It's a very dialed in fit. You have that upper wrapping your foot perfectly without leaving too much room for, um, you know, feet with more volume or wider feet. So if you have one of these, just, you know, be careful, be mindful that this may not work for you or that at least you need to try it before uh, jumping on with this shoe. However, for me, this fit works really, really well. Small overlay here in the, in the forefoot to prevent from, uh, from some rocks to, to hit your, your toes. Very minimal padding in the, in the heel, nothing too excessive. Same for the tongue, very minimal padding, but it all works really well. I think Hoka is really nailing the tongues. I have in mind, you know, the Mac 4, Mac 5, Mac X, Rugged X2 also very minimal, but nevertheless, they work and they don't create any lacing pressure despite not having that extra cushion, extra plushness in the, um, in the tongs. You also have that padding going on the outside of the shoe, which I think is useless, but probably contributes to that visual appeal of the shoe and the idea that it brings cushion because you don't even have that bolster of cushion on the inside. It's only on the outside. That's why I, th I think it's useless, but hey, it's um, the, the, small, the small details. Looking at the midsole, Profly Plus midsole, it's an EVA based super critical midsole on this shoe. Two different layers, a softer one on top, the orange one, and a firmer one at the bottom, the yellow one. This doesn't change too much compared to the original um, Tecton X. Feeling similar, I would say maybe a bit softer, but that's just my, my feeling here. It's still that dual plated shoe, so you have basically uh, plates on the lateral side of the shoe, allowing for some very nice, um, you know, torsion like this and for the shoe to really contour the, the trails on which you're running. As you can see, it has a bit of flex, not too much, just a bit of flex here at the end of the forefoot, towards the end of the forefoot here. The plates in this shoe, I think, really play more of a stabilizer role than anything else. It's a snappy ride in the forefoot, but I think that's not necessarily due to the plate. At least in my opinion, I don't really feel them in the forefoot. I really feel them helping, you know, to compensate the softness of the Profline Plus midsole, contour the trails maybe a little bit and adapt to the trails maybe a little bit, but mostly, yeah, stabilizing that ride. 
and making that shoe kind of a unique animal on the trail scene, at least in my experience. How is the ride of the shoe? It's a very agile ride, very, um, I wouldn't call it aggressive, but it's asking you to move fast on the trails. It's very good both in climbing and in descending. Descents, you have that heel with that Profly Plus that compresses quite well and offers you some cushion without preventing you from moving fast in the descents. And that's descents on the trails and also on the roads, which is quite unique, I would say. And you can move fast on the roads with this shoe in, in some you know, long descents. In the heels, in the, in the climbs, I should say, you have the agility of that you know, lower stack height in the, in the forefoot. It's not very low, but 27 millimeters isn't as high as some other uh, shoes. You have that agility, you know where you are putting your feet, you know that the shoe is very responsive and will give you back some energy once you are towing off. There is no flaw really in the ride of this shoe. It's comprehensive, it's complete, it's offering you everything you need. The only drawback, if that's one, is maybe that this shoe will suffer on some terrains. I'm thinking of the Alps, for instance, but even there I could I could see it being used for, you know, longer races uh, at UTMB, for instance, or in the Pyrenees um, on some rocky or technical terrain. For anything flat, gravelish, not too technical, it's the ultimate shoe, in my opinion. If too technical, I, I think it, it, it can do the, the trick. It can compete against the ultra distant shoes. Even in the Hoka range, I could see myself picking this one uh, against uh, the Speed Goat or the Mefate, just because it's so comprehensive and, and so good. And again, I haven't tried as many trail shoes as road shoes, but this is by far the best one I've tried on the trails. And I'm not saying it lightly. I know, uh, you know, you cannot say every shoe is the, the best shoe. It comes at a cost and I'm ready. I'm prepared to um, battle and argue that this is really the best shoe I've tried. Let me know in the comments. Have you tried this shoe? Is it a shoe that you want to try? And if you have tried it, how does it compare to other shoes you have experienced? Quickly looking at the outsole as well. Four millimeter logs, Vibram, light base and mega grip. Light base being the thickness of the, of the um, layer of rubber. Mega Grip being the technology, if I'm not mistaken, the, the rubber compound. Uh, so you have the two technologies on this shoe. I honestly cannot judge the grip based on what I've done with the shoe. I haven't run in anything too muddy, too wet, too um, technical. But for what I've done, the downhills, the technical uh, curves and everything uh, such on the trails, it's, it's working really, really well. So I'm not too worried about other conditions, especially with the expertise that Vibram is bringing to the table. The price point is a bit steep, I must be honest, that's how I feel about it. 210, 220 euros dollars is a bit high. If it's compared against some super shoes on the road with carbon plates, then you would say, yes, maybe it's not that high, but compared to all the trail shoes, even advanced trail shoes, it's maybe 10, 20, 30 units too high. And if you find it discounted, then I think the value for money just goes up a notch. I will link to the review of the Hoka Tecton X, the original Tecton X from Hoka. It's going to be right here on your screen. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride, and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.